the whole climate of thought will be different. There will be no thought as we understand it now. Orthodoxy means not thinking. One of these days, thought Winston, the sign will be vaporized. He sees too clearly. He speaks too plainly. One day he will disappear. You heard that 175,000 votes were not counted in the state of Florida. But it's not like everybody's vote counted or was not counted the same. The number of votes not counted was in direct proportion, county to county, to the black population of the county. So how could it be that, for example, in Gadsden County, 52% of the population is black and one out of eight votes was not counted? One out of eight. Whereas in white counties like Citrus, almost all white, only one in 200 ballots was voided. How did this happen? And I go down to Florida, I go to Lehigh County, but we're all looking at Chad's, you know, the guys looking at the hang of Chad's and all, and they, they make it sound like it's this big mysterious deal checking the ballots in Florida. Most, a big hunk of Florida votes by paper ballot, which is read by machine. You know, if you ever took like the SAT and you use those number two pencils, you stick it in the machine and you know, they read, it's an optical reader. So they had a practice voting machine set up in a supervisor's office in Tallahassee. And so I voted, took out my pretend ballot, and I voted for Nader, and I voted for Buchanan. And I stuck the Buchanan-Nader ballot into the voting machine. And it came back. I stuck it in again. Yeah. I said, oh, okay, okay, wait. I'm trying to vote here, and it won't take my ballot. He said, of course not. You marked it for two candidates. You made a mistake. You won't accept a mistake on the ballot. I said, what do you mean? All those votes were, were voided in Gadsden. Now, Leon County is a white county. Tallahassee, Gadsden's right next door to the black county. said, oh, well, see, there's this switch. And in the black counties, like Gadsden, the same exact machines were set to accept ballots with errors. They would accept, you'd make a mistake on your ballot, very easy to do on a paper ballot, like you circle a name instead of check it off. The ballot's accepted, it's voided, your vote doesn't count. And in more of the white areas, it was set on reject so that if you made a mistake and you voted, it came back to you, you were given a fresh ballot, and you got to vote again. And the losers in this were the American people, whatever your political views, because we all have a right to have the person actually won the election take power. We all have the right uh, to there be a fair count. Helen Thomas, dean of the White House reporters, was quoted as saying, that Bush is the worst president she has covered, the worst president ever. At President Bush's pre-war news conference, for the first time in 40 years, Helen Thomas was not allowed to ask a question. She had disappeared. A chill wind is blowing in this nation. A message is being sent through the White House and its allies in talk radio and Clear Channel and Cooperstown. If you oppose this administration, there can and will be ramifications. In the last several years, media corporations and politics have merged in a new way. Murdoch is a brilliant man who, what he has done and has had a tremendous influence in the worst possible way on culture and on media uh, in the United States and throughout the world. And what he does, he does it in England and he does it in the United States. His shtick is appealing to working class people and taking them to the right. And he does this through violence. He does this through super patriotism. He does this through sensationalism. So what you have now, and I'll give him credit for this, Fox Television is the first major network that has no pretense. I mean, CBS and NBC, they have a pretense to objectivity. Rupert Murdoch's Fox News Network is run by Roger Ailes. Ailes was the executive producer of TV for Richard Nixon. He was a consultant to Ronald Reagan and George Bush I. 
Tony Snow, a host, is a Bush speechwriter. The anchor, Britt Yoon, contributed articles to the ultra-conservative American Spectator. The phrase fair and balanced is repeated incessantly, like a mantra. Fair, balanced. Herbal said, if you repeat a lie often enough, people will believe it. All of their uh, talk shows are controlled by extreme right-wing Republicans. And it is a front for the right wing of the Republican Party. John Ellis, the head of Fox's election desk, Jeb and George W. Bush's first cousin. And it's notable that on election night, the first network to declare that George W. Bush had won the presidency of the United States was Fox. And it was John Ellis who made the calculation and the determination that they should make that call. But it's not only Fox. At GE, the wall between journalism and politics was also broken. According to the Reuters News Service, former General Electric Chairman Jack Welch came into the NBC studio and insisted that the race be called for fellow Republican George Bush. All the while, an NBC in-house taping system was recording Welch in the studio that night. NBC refused to turn over the tape despite repeated requests from Congressman Henry Waxman. NBC President Andrew Lack claimed turning over the tape would infringe on the editorial process. Waxman replied, Mr. Welch is not a journalist. And we now know the studies show pretty clearly, they, as they understood, they lost the vote. If there had been a fair vote, they would have been out of power. Calling the election for George Bush that night set the tone for any recount scenarios. And the whole tenor of the coverage followed that. If you watch Chris Matthews, O'Reilly, Brian Williams, when is Gore going to finally give up? Another desperation measure by Gore. The assumption being Bush had won, Gore is just scra scrambling, trying to sneak his way into some loophole. The irony is that as the corporate news media has moved to the right, charges of a liberal bias have become pervasive. This impression was created because the Republicans have an arsenal of on-air pundits, adept at polarizing opinion, and ridiculing anyone who disagrees. And they can rely on Murdoch-owned media assets. Some stories disappear. Others are repeated endlessly. Murdoch, in turn, gets his deregulation. A conservative pundit, Bill Salmon, has written a book about Al Gore's attempt to steal the election. I find out that the party launching his book will be full of lobbyists and pundits and decide to go videotape them. Funny thing is, these behind the scenes operators don't like to be taped. As the right got more and more of a toehold in, in, in the media culture generally, through the efforts of Heritage and Hoover Foundation and others, that myth became increasingly serviceable, you see. You could cow moderates, much less liberals. You could cow anyone who wasn't a right winger working in the media by constantly assailing them with accusations of liberal bias. Or by assailing them about a lack of patriotism. I'm Janine Jackson from FAIR, the Media Watch Group. Um, I thought you might like to know that the Heritage Foundation has announced that Jesus would support a war on Iraq. The argument is no longer made that news media are hard on Republicans and easy on, on Teddy Kennedy and Ralph Nader. That's not the argument. That argument is so ludicrous as it, would, it doesn't even pass the giggle test. The argument now simply redefines left to right entirely in ways that drop out core issues of class, core issues of corporate power. The media does not discuss the growing uh, you know, inequity between the rich and the poor and the disappearance of the middle class. I could go on and on and on. There is no evidence whatsoever for the claim that there's a liberal bias in the media. It's based entirely on a stereotypic view of the reporters themselves, many of whom may be liberals, 